Over the last 12 months or so, my photography has undergone a bit of a transformation. Up until that point, I had largely seen the world beyond 100 millimeters or so. I looked for scenes and compositions and elements that felt so far from reality and that in and of themselves, they could tell their own unique story. And I still look for these moments. Now though, I've had this growing interest in wide angle photography. And that's the biggest reason I'm making this video, because now a wide angle lens is the lens that never leaves my bag. So why specifically for me is it so essential to include in my bag anywhere I'm going, anytime, without question? I find that it boils down to really three main elements. The first of them is that there are some scenes that are just best served with a wide angle lens. These are scenes that have big elements, whether it's the subject, whether it's the foreground, the background, whatever it may be, there's lots of very imposing elements. And a wide angle lens, I find, is often the best way to bring them all together in a cohesive manner. It also can be really tricky to avoid a busy scene, but that doesn't mean that there isn't opportunity to create a very cohesive one. My second reason has to do with adventure storytelling, where I feel that this lens is the undisputed champion. There's no better lens for getting close to your subject, capturing action, emotion, and the feelings going on while also bringing in the broader scene and everything around the movements. So the third and final reason is just that I prefer to shoot in non-normal focal lengths. I think that wide shots that are unbelievable, uh, that don't look the way the human eye looks, long shots that you can only get through telephoto lenses, I think these are where we capture the imagination best, and it's where I have the most fun creating photos. Um, so that's one of the biggest reasons I will never leave without my wide zoom lens. It's one of the best ways I have to be creative and to evoke an emotion and tell a better story in a place that suits the way I feel about it. Wow, I cannot believe this bird. So now that I've said that it's a wide angle zoom that I cannot live without, I wanna talk about the one that is my favorite and that I choose to use because it has become very near and dear to me and it's a part of every visual story I tell. This is the Nikon 17 to 28 F2.8. There are a whole bunch of reasons I rate this lens so highly, and a whole bunch of reasons I think it's 
entirely underrated and underutilized in the photography world. Um, and the first is versatility. I don't necessarily mean to say that it's perfect, right? It's a 17 to 28 millimeter, which is not quite a 16 to 35. It's also not quite as wide as a 14 to 24. And, you know, at first glance, that might seem like a con, and I guess in some ways it is. However, what it turns out to be is something entirely different and something entirely worth considering. The truth is that most f2.8 lenses, they come with this huge weight tag and price tag. You get to cut the price in half and you get to cut the weight in half and still be able to shoot blue hour and after golden hour and astro and aurora photography and everything that goes on when the light goes down. That's why I chose this lens because there is no other f2.8 in this size and this price range doing what this lens can do with the range that it still has. And then if you want to talk ergonomics and handling, it's a small lens with an internal zoom, no switches, no buttons, a clear zoom ring, a clear focus ring, both rubberized, everything just functions simply and easily. So it really gets out of the way. There's just nothing to complain about. Above all else, this lens's defining quality is its reliability. This is true for the fact that it can handle snow, salt, ice, and mud without falter, and in the consistent and reliable results it gives you in terms of sharpness, aberrations, and other visual patterns that are all very well managed. As with all wide lenses, there is a degree of distortion that has to be managed while you're framing your photos. There will be some bend in a light post, some stretching of a body if it's left in the top of the frame. But considering how wide this lens goes, the distortion is well managed and, when used correctly, can add an artistic component to your photographs. So I just wanted to take a quick second to talk you guys through this shot I'm working through right now. I've got this big, beautiful tree and it's got these four main trunks coming out of it. Um, they're all sort of weaving in different directions, giving it this really, really nice three dimensionality. Um, and then to help that, all the other trees and all the other foliage, is, it, there's a little bit of space between it and the tree. And that really helps this tree to stand out as kind of this clear main subject. Um, so I'm getting really low. I'm opening this thing up really, really wide to about 17 millimeters. Um, and then I'm trying to use the sun that's coming in from the back and backlighting the tree. I'm trying to use that to kind of uh, to balance the light out, not let anything blow out, um, but to you know, maybe add a sun star, uh, at least to emphasize some of the texture on the tree. My settings are right around 1 20th to 1 40th of a second. Um, right around f8 to f11 and ISO 200 to 400, depending on what it takes to get uh, you know, a sharp frame with you know, this intermittent breeze coming through. Anyway, that's what I'm working on here and here's the result. I hope you guys like it, let me know. So is it a perfect lens? I mean, no, of course not. Uh, a perfect lens would have that 16 to 35 zoom range. Maybe it would cost a little bit less. Maybe it would weigh even a little bit less. But ultimately, the combination of value, usability, versatility, build quality, everything, I mean, I think it's about as compelling an option as Nikon sells right now. With that, I'm bringing this one to a close. Thank you guys for spending the day with me out taking photos in a beautiful place. Ultimately, I didn't quite get the light I wanted. Things fell flat early in the day. Got a couple photos I'm proud of, but ultimately cut the day somewhat short. To conclude, the Nikon 17 to 28 millimeter is definitely one of my favorite lenses. There's very little I can complain about, uh, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Aside from commenting below, my final request 
is if you can like and subscribe because that is what helps me to grow on here and what helps me to create more of these videos. I really appreciate your time and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.